what are you doing in the fridge? Oh, it's because it's setup day, huh? All right, let's get the tour going. Come on. No, like, actually, are, are you coming or are you just gonna hang out in here? Yeah, she has no idea why I'm talking to the fridge. You know, that's just kind of how things roll around here. All right, so hopefully I'm in frame. Hopefully everything looks and sounds good. I don't really do this whole vlogging thing, just being honest. So uh, I'm gonna hope this goes well, but we walk into the room and, uh, and this is what you see. What the frick did you just say? And that's about it. So thanks so much for tuning into the setup tour. Hope you guys enjoyed. No, but seriously, this is what it looks like when you walk into the room. We got the office set up, we got the bed. We got a little bit of everything going on in here. And uh, I guess I guess we'll start right here. Hello. I am Zach, this is kind of overkill. This is just a setup tour. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna be real with you. But first thing you'll see when you walk in here is the little dresser setup. We got the G Fuel collection, we'll get into that. We also got the TV mounted on the wall. This is a, I wanna say 55 inch. It's either 50 or 55. I think it's 55 though. This is a uh, 55 inch 4K Samsung smart TV. Shout out to my buddy Jordan or Espresso. He was the one who actually uh, showed me this TV originally. I think it was on like Amazon Prime Day. He was looking for TVs. He hit me with this link for this one. And I liked it, so uh, so I got it. So shout out to Jordan for the Swift TV hookup. But no, it's a pretty nice TV, relatively cheap for a uh, for a 4K TV too. And it's a smart TV, so it's got uh, you know Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, all that good stuff as well. And to go with that, we got the nice little uh, we got the nice little Samsung soundbar as well. It's got a little subwoofer down there too, so that's pretty cool. Great for uh, you know chilling out at night, watching movies, watching TV, whatever it may be. But then, more importantly, on the top of the dresser here, we got the G Fuel collection. We pretty much have every flavor you could imagine here. We got the brand new PewDiePie flavor, strawberry, banana, snow cone, all that good stuff. To this day though, still my all time favorite, I get asked this a lot, Zach, what's your favorite G Fuel flavor? Watermelon has to be the go-to. You can mix it with anything super good by itself as well, but kiwi strawberry, that's the way to go, absolute number one. Alongside all the tubs, we also have all the shaker cups here as well. We got the Miami Night shaker cups sitting out in the front. Honestly, it's probably the best shaker cup you can buy. I don't know if it's available right now, but I absolutely love how that one looks. We also got some tall boys there as well. And then these suckers are probably two of my favorite things in the whole setup. These are some Breaking Bad whiskey glasses. I actually just turned 21 not too long ago. And I got these. I think those are super, super cool. I am a massive fan of Breaking Bad, so I thought that was a neat little addition to the collection here. But moving on over here, I've got a Dell gaming laptop. Honestly, it's nothing too crazy. I don't really use it that much just because I don't really have a need for it. I've got my PC here. And that's what I'm working off of 99.9% .9 of the time. So this doesn't really see a whole lot of action, but it is there in case I need it. We've also got the DirecTV box, some AirPods, wallet keys, all that business. But now into the into the fun stuff, into the exciting stuff. Wait, wait, what is what is this? Oh, that's that's awkward. Let me let me get rid of that really quick. Uh you guys. That wasn't intentional. That wasn't that wasn't planned at all. What are you saying? But getting into the actual setup here, I guess we'll uh, we'll start with the chair here. This is a Respawn 200 series chair. I am actually sponsored by Respawn. They hooked it up with this super, super comfortable chair. I actually really like it a lot. It's got the uh, it's got the mesh back so it doesn't get too hot. And it's just comfy all around. My posture has always sucked and this is actually super comfortable to sit in. So I definitely like this a lot. You can use code immortal on Respawn if you would like. They have some pretty cool chairs. They also make desks too. So that is pretty cool as well. Then moving on over to here, we got a nice little Dyson bladeless fan just because it does get pretty hot in here with all of this equipment on sometimes, especially during the summer. So that is nice to have there right in front of the AC unit down on the ground. Down here, we've got the uh, the router, which actually ties into the modem over here. Um, and then that's nothing too crazy. It's just like an Asus router. However, that might be changing here in the near future. And you guys will see why here on the channel pretty soon, hopefully working on something there that could be pretty exciting for you guys. Underneath here, we got the uh, we got the console station, nothing too crazy. All the games that I play, more like all the games that I don't really play. Really, most of the games I have down here are just sitting here waiting in case I need them one day for B-roll or something like that. Most of my time is just spent on the current Call of Duty, playing that, getting footage for that, recording and uploading that. Most of the other games don't really get touched all that much. I think we got most of the Call of Duties there, some Forza games, a uh, Grand Theft Auto game, stuff like that, but really most of my time is spent on the current Call of Duty. Next to that, we've got my console shelf, which is really just like uh, like a shoe shelf put together, and it actually works pretty well because it's all open, so nothing gets really too hot down there. But on the very bottom, we've got the PS4, we've got the Xbox One above that, then we got the old Xbox 360 on the very top there. I, uh, I really don't touch the Xbox One or the Xbox 360 all that much. Most of my time is spent playing PS4 because that's where all the new content is. That's really where all my friends are as well. So most of those consoles don't really get played, but once again, gotta have them in case I need them. And you never know further on down the line, maybe some good exclusives come out on Xbox. Maybe Xbox gets some bonuses. 
never hurts to have them. Above that, I got some pencils, little pocket knife for opening stuff, a controller for that HDMI switch back there, which has all the lights on it. You guys can see that. And that basically allows me to take all my consoles, plug them in at once, and then if I ever need to switch to Xbox on the fly, all I gotta do is press a button on the remote and I can change console input super easy. That way I don't have to like try and shift my way back there and crawl back there to unplug stuff and plug other stuff back in. That makes that super easy. And then next to that, that little gray circle box there, that is actually an audio splitter, which essentially just does the same thing. It allows me to have all my consoles plugged in at once. Then I don't have to worry about that at all. Speaking of audio, moving up here, we got the Astro A40 mix amp. This is the Pro TR 2019 edition. So that plugs into all my consoles and then also into my PC. And of course, got to use the Astro headset with those as well. Once again, these are the A40s. I've, uh, I've used Astro products for quite some time now, ever since like MW3 I've had Astros. Super, super good headset. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I do really enjoy them. They have really good audio quality. I can use it on PC and my console at the same time. So that is pretty convenient. We then have my audio mixer, which is a Go XLR mixer. It's a little bit on the pricey end, but honestly, this is hands down the best mixer that I've ever used for, uh, for audio quality and just for Overall convenience, it is super, super cool, and that is plugged into my Shure SM7B XLR microphone, and that's hooked up via the Rode PSA1 boom arm. But this mixer honestly is really, really cool. I've used a lot of mixers in my time here on YouTube, and this is by far my favorite. It allows me to control things on the fly with the dials here. I can mute my mic super easy if I need to. These buttons are actually sample buttons, so I can go in and record something and then press that button and it'll play back immediately. And it's also got a bunch of different effects as well. I can change the reverb, the echo, the pitch, the gender, all sorts of cool stuff there. So I can make my voice sound super deep, super high, all sorts of fun stuff with that. Back behind the mixer, then I have my Scuf Impact PS4 controller, and I've got the control freaks on there. These are the uh, the Vortex control freaks, and that is the BO4 Grav Slam control freak. By the way, you can also use Code Immortal on Control Freak as well. But as far as the Scuf controller goes, this is probably one of the biggest things you can have. If you are a competitive gamer, if you care about doing well in Call of Duty, these things make it so much easier to do well in game. And that is because of those paddles right there, as you guys can see. Those paddles basically allow you to map different buttons to them. So all four of those paddles on the back map to X, triangle, square, circle, all that good stuff. So I don't ever actually have to take my hands off the controller when I'm playing. I can just straight up press those paddles. And in general, it just makes it way more convenient. Now, speaking of scuff controllers, I, uh, I only have a minor collection, I guess. We've got the OG PS4 scuff controller here. This is like the first PS4 scuff that they ever made. Not like literally the first one, but the first edition of scuff controllers for PS4. So have that just because it's a cool little memory to have. And honestly, this controller still works. It's only got two paddles on the back, but it's still a pretty good controller in all honesty. I've got a standard PS4 scuff controller. So when I'm not playing Call of Duty, if I want to still use a scuff, I can do that. And that one actually matches the one that I have over there just because I'm OCD like that and I really like the look of carbon fibers. So that's that. We've got the Xbox One scuff controller. And then we got the big throwback, the Xbox 360 hybrid scuff controller. Once again, this is something that doesn't really get used all that much, but in case I need it, I've got it. And it also looks super, super cool as well. Kind of got the, uh, the blue theme going on there with a little bit of carbon fiber in there as well. Now this right here doesn't really have to do with the controllers, but this is the lens that I use for my camera when I actually am using it as a face cam. So as you guys can see, well, I guess it's probably easier if I do this. As you guys can see, I've got the camera here. This is a Sony A6400 camera. Super, super nice. Like the quality on this thing is absolutely insane. The lens that I have on it now though is not the lens that I use for my face cam. And instead I use this lens. This is a, uh, actually I can just show you cause I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. It is a Sigma, if it wants to focus, focus, focus. There we go, oh, we almost had it, there we go. This is a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. And honestly, I use it because the bokeh on it is absolutely awesome. So a little bit expensive, but definitely worth the quality in my own opinion. Now getting into the meat and potatoes of the setup itself, back here in the very back, we've got two Elgato key lights. We've got one on the left and another on the right. These things are super, super good for lighting. They don't really have a huge footprint either. They literally just clamp onto your desk and they are very, very small, but they provide some absolutely fantastic lighting. One thing that I cannot stress enough when it comes to quality in your videos and in your content itself, lighting quality is something that is severely, severely underrated. You can have an absolutely fantastic camera. You can have a basic webcam, but it's all gonna look way, way better if you have decent lighting. And that is exactly what these Elgato key lights do for me. So huge shout out to Elgato. They actually hooked it up with these. If you guys want to check out Elgato products, you guys will see plenty more throughout the rest of this setup tour. There is always a link down in the description below. 
Next to that, we've got just a standard lamp. This doesn't really do anything. I just have this on when I'm casually working. And we've also got another Rode PSA one there. And you might be wondering, Zach, why is it sticking up like that? It's kind of just like sticking out like a sore thumb, right? Yeah, well, that's because uh, normally this camera is posted up on top of it. So the camera will sit like right here if I'm recording. However, uh, when the camera's not on it, it doesn't really work like that. So yeah, we've also got a little art up on the walls. You know, I, it's, it's not a very impressive collection, but we've got a limited edition Breaking Bad poster over here that you can't really see because the reflection of the lamp, but it's a pretty cool piece of art. I like that. We've got an office sign. Absolutely love that. I've had that in here for years. The Office is another one of my favorite shows, so I had to get that. And then behind this key light, unfortunately the key light does kind of block, but we've got another Breaking Bad like little poster thing there as well, which is pretty cool. Moving down from that though, we of course have the triple monitor setup as I've sort of teased all throughout the video. These are three Asus 1080p 180 hertz monitors. I have messed around a lot with monitors recently and bought a bunch of different ones just to test them out. And these I actually really, really liked. I think the exact model is the Asus PG248Q, I believe. So they are 24 inch monitors, 1080p, 180 Hertz. They are TN panels, so the viewing angles aren't incredibly good, nor is the color reproduction. But as far as gaming goes, these monitors are absolutely fantastic. One millisecond response time, super low input lag. Cannot recommend these suckers enough. They are super, super good for both PC gaming and also console gaming. So that is what I've got working there for peripherals there. Now down on the desk itself, I've got the HyperX mouse pad. It's a larger like XL mouse pad, so I can fit my keyboard and my mouse on it, which I really do prefer over say, just having a mouse pad for your mouse alone. I like the look of this. It's a little bit more sleek. And then uh, the keyboard itself, uh, you guys, you guys are probably gonna roast me for this in the comments, but this is a chiclet keyboard from Razer. They don't even make this thing anymore, unfortunately but it is the Razer Deathstalker, I wanna say. Like I said, they don't make it anymore. It is super, super old. I've had this for honestly longer than I can remember, but the reason I keep it is because it is so quiet. The chiclet keys mean that when I'm typing, if I'm streaming and I'm typing or if I'm recording, playing like a PC game, you guys aren't gonna hear all the keyboard noises in the background, which for me is something that bothers me a lot. I don't like hearing keyboard noises. So having the chiclet keys on there makes this thing super, super quiet. And I'm just used to the feel of it by now. So switching over to other keyboards is like super inconvenient and just awkward at this point. So I just stick with this. Going with that, I also have the, uh, the Ninja Final Mouse, the Air 58 Final Mouse. Honestly, it's nothing too crazy. It might be a little bit overhyped at this point, uh, but it is super light. I do like that. It's got some buttons on the side for key binds and whatnot. Uh, it's not the world's greatest gaming mouse. It's just a gaming mouse. I like it. I use it. Honestly, nothing too crazy there. I've also got a little mouse bungee in the back there. Moving over here, I've got an Elgato Stream Deck. And if you are a streamer, if you're a content creator, once again, Elgato has got you covered. The Stream Deck basically allows you to do anything you want to at any given time. You can map all these buttons out. Like for instance, these two ones on the right and the left, turn on my Elgato key lights. What do you know? It's almost like they were uh, like they were made to be, but seriously, the Stream Deck is super, super convenient. I can switch scenes in OBS. I can play some funny things like uh, like this. Stupid, I'm not gonna let you get the chance. Yeah, so that's super creative. I can, uh, you know, I can skip songs on Spotify. I can turn Spotify off. So super, super convenient thing to have there for streaming. I've got some like standard, these are Insignia speakers. They're like $40 speakers. You can have so, so many nicer things than these, but honestly, these are super convenient. I like the sound quality. They come with a uh, with a subwoofer that you guys can see down there. And uh, I really have no reason to upgrade them because I like them. So that's what I got rocking there. And then moving on over here, we got my phone. It's an iPhone XS, I believe. We got the Hydro Flask because we ain't about that bottle life in here. Actually, super convenient to have a Hydro Flask. Keeps my water cold all day long. And then this is something that not too many people have and I absolutely love it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Carnage coaster. They were super, super limited when they first released years and years and years ago. I'm super glad that I was actually able to grab one of these. I wasn't even in Carnage when these dropped, I'm pretty sure, but I got it now. I've used it ever since and uh, it's honestly one of my favorite parts of my entire setup. And then of course, to have all of this, you gotta have a decent PC, which I think I have. I actually am very, very excited about my PC because I just got a ton of upgrades with it. So as we move on underneath the desk, first things first, uh, the cable management. It's not bad, I don't think. It's not great, but it's not that bad, right? If you guys, please tell me in the comments it's not that bad because I worked way too long on it for you guys to just roast me with it. But what really matters here, the PC, which you guys can just see my reflection, but in there, you guys can see right there that's lighting up, that is a GeForce GTX Asus ROG Strix 2080 Ti. Absolute like tip top, best of the best graphics card that you can have. 
it is a beast. Seriously, I have like 500 FPS in Minecraft, so I'm really putting that to good use, you know? Uh, back there, I've got a Corsair cooling block. It's a liquid cooling block, so I got the fans up on the top there. And that is cooling an Intel Core i9-9900K, so once again, a super, super good CPU. And so gaming on this thing, rendering, streaming, it is really, really nice. Absolutely love this thing. It is a beast. We got 64 gigs of RAM in there as well, so it's a bit overkill, but uh, I mean, that is years and years and years of saving up and hard work and trying to get like the best PC parts I could. And I use it literally every single day, so it's definitely worthwhile. Also, not sure if you guys can see them. Ah, uh, yeah, you can kind of see them. In there, I also have two Elgato HD60 Pro capture cards. So they are PCI cards, they go inside of your computer. And I use one of those for all the consoles over there. And then I also use one for the camera when I'm using this as like my webcam. So. Those are super, super convenient. They have like no input latency. Cannot recommend them enough. Seriously though, check out the link in the description below. Now, one thing that I did want to say about all of this is that by no means do you need all of this to be a YouTuber. You actually need a very simplified version of this to be a YouTuber these days because like consoles have built-in recording software. You can edit and upload from your PS4 or from your Xbox. If you have a PC, you have OBS. Like there's so many different creation tools out there now. This is definitely a little overkill if you ask me but at the same time this is years and years and years of hard work and saving money and just the culmination of a lot of effort to really make the best gaming setup that i think i've ever had and i'm really really proud of it i absolutely love what i am working with here could not be more proud of what i've built here that said this is my gaming setup i really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any other questions if you have anything you want to know about the setup that i did not cover in this video feel free to uh let me know down in the comments below. I, uh, well, let's just, let's just be honest here. I'm not very good at this vlogging thing. Hopefully this video wasn't too bad. If you guys enjoyed it though, drop a like on it, give it a big old thumbs up and uh, snow. Bark, bark. All right, cool. Thanks for tuning in. Have an awesome rest of your day, guys. I'll catch you later. Peace out.